Welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to use the Chi-Square Independence Test in Excel to determine whether the time that a customer spends on a website is related to the order size. And here are the steps. We're going to survey 10,000 website visitors for the number of items that they purchased and how long they stayed on the site. And then we're going to arrange that data on a contingency table. We'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to calculate the chi-square statistic for that sample data. And we're going to compare the calculated chi-square statistic with the critical chi-square statistic. And the rule for the comparison is, if the calculated chi-square statistic is greater than the critical chi-square statistic, then we would say that those two attributes are related. They're not independent of each other. And in this case, we're testing to determine whether the number of items purchased is related to the amount of time spent on the website. So we want to see if that calculated chi-square statistic is greater or less than the critical chi-square statistic. If it's less than, we would say that those two attributes are, not, are independent of each other. So here's the problem. As we stated, we're going to survey, we're going to take a random survey of 10,000 visitors on the website out of a much larger universe. And we're going to survey the, each one of them for the number of items purchased and how long they spent on the website. And we want to determine within 99% certainty of whether the amount of time that they spent on the website is related to the number of items that that website visitor purchased. So here are the steps. Once again, as we mentioned before, we're taking a random sample of 10,000 website visitors out of a much, much larger university of web website visitors on that site. We're surveying them for the number of items they purchased and how long they stayed on the site. And we're creating a contingency table in which the sampled customers are placed in groups of other similar customers. Each group has customers with the same number of items purchased and same amount of time on the site. Here's an example of a contingency table. We can see there are 10,000 total sampled and they're broken up into uh, groups. The columns are, are number of items purchased, zero, one, and two and the rows are the amount of time spent on the site. Zero to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 20, and more than 20. And each customer is placed in a group of other customers that have the same number of items purchased and the same amount of time spent on the website. And we can see the totals at the bottom of each column and at the end of each row. So that's a contingency table that we put the sample data in. And step two, we're going to calculate the chi-square statistic for that sample data. So here's how we do it. Here's the original contingency table, and what we want to do with that is to blank out the data that we just put in there, but leaving the column and row totals. There we have it's blanked out. And what we're going to do is put in each one of those cells, each one of those nine cells, the number that we would expect to be in that group based upon the totals and the columns and the rows. So let's take a look and see how we did that. Well, the first, the upper left hand corner cell, we would expect to have 600 customers in there because that column has 3,000 total, and that row contains two-tenths of the total customers there, 2,000 out of 10,000. So we could take 3,000 and multiply that by two-tenths, that would give us 600. So we've done that calculation to each one of the nine cells there, and that's, those are the numbers that we'd, we would expect to be in each one of those nine cells based upon the totals of the columns and the rows. 600 is in the upper left-hand column. And let's compare that with the actual contingency table. So we can see up top, FT, the expected number of customers. Down the bottom, F0, there's a little typo. That should say the actual number of covers, uh, customers. That's our contingency table, the, da the data that we took. And we're going to do some manipulation on that data to calculate the chi-square statistic for that data. So we can see the column in the left-hand corner of this table. These numbers come from the actual number that we surveyed, from our actual table that we took of data. You see where each one of those numbers came from. And the second column in red comes from the expected number of customers in each group. Okay, so now we're going to take, in the third column, we're going to take the actual number of customers and subtract the expected number of customers from that, and that's in our third column. And our fourth column, we're going to square what we just had. So the square of the actual number of customers minus the expected number of customers in the fourth column. In the fifth column, we're going to divide that square by the expected number of customers. 
then we're going to sum up that whole column, and the sum of that column is the, the chi-square statistic for that data. And in this case, the chi-square statistic for that sample data is 794.3. And our next step in this process is to calculate the critical chi-square statistic. And a critical chi-square statistic is based upon two things, the degrees of freedom and the required degree of certainty. And the degrees of freedom is determined by the contingency table. R equals the number of rows and C is the number of columns in the contingency table. There were three rows and three columns in that table. So degrees of freedom equals the quantity of rows minus one times columns minus one, that's three minus one, times three minus one equals four. And the required degree of certainty, 99%, that means that alpha equals 0.01. And here's how the calculation works to calculate that critical chi-square statistic. Once again, the number of rows in the contingency table, we can see that's three, number of columns is three. And the degrees of freedom in that contingency table is calculated to be four. And we use an Excel formula to calculate that critical chi-square statistic. And we can see what that formula is in there. It has two parameters, the alpha, which is 0.01. That is one minus the required degree of certainty. One minus 0.99 equals 0.01. And the uh, degrees of freedom in that data, four. So our answer for the chi-square critical value is 13.28. Now we uh, run it through our rule. If the calculated chi-square statistic, that would be 794.3, is greater than the critical chi-square statistic, 13.28, we would say that those two attributes are related, that they're not independent. And that is the case here. We can see this is our critical chi-square value. We've calculated that to be 13.28. And we're going to compare that with the actual uh, chi-square statistic. That was, there's the calculation for the actual chi-square, 794.3. And uh, here's the rule. So we can see that those two attributes are not independent because the actual chi-square statistic is much, much greater than the critical chi-square value. So if you'd like to be an Excel statistical master, check out www.excelmasterseries.com. Take a look at the Excel statistical master. That's 400 pages of MBA level statistics all done in Excel. And you can be an Excel statistical master too. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.